So in this video, we're going to talk about DNA, chromosomes, and genes. First thing we're going to need to do is recap DNA. So if you haven't already, I really recommend you go and watch my What Is DNA video, and you can do that by clicking here. Okay, so let's do this DNA recap. Right, in the DNA video, we went through the main points and features of our DNA molecule. And we found that they were these points here. First of all, DNA is two complementary strands. We call it a double helix. It's like that ladder which has been twisted up. It has a sugar phosphate backbone. It's made up of four types of nucleotide. A is the base on one nucleotide. T is the base on the another. C and G. So there are four bases on those nucleotides. We have complementary base pairing in DNA. It's a rule where A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. DNA is the genetic information of living things and DNA is able to self-replicate. Just to remind ourselves, let's bring in this molecule here. So here's our DNA, double helix, Sugar phosphate backbone, sugar phosphate backbone. These are the bases which are part of the nucleotide, but we have A, T, C, and G, and they always pair up in a complementary manner. A and T, A and T, A and T, C and G, C and G, C and G, C and G. So that's our DNA recap. So what are chromosomes? Well, I'm fairly sure you've heard of them before, and there might be certain bits and pieces which you've heard about a chromosome. For example, you might have heard that humans have 46 chromosomes. You might have known that chromosomes have something to do with DNA. Let's just bring this in here. This is the human karyotype. Here's that, there's that word here which you can hopefully make out. Karyotype. A karyotype is a picture of all of the chromosomes from within a cell of a particular species. And this is the karyotype for humans. So in the human karyotype, as you can see, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes which make up 46. And that's something you may or may not have already known. Humans have 46 of these things called chromosomes. But as we said, what are they? Well, let's summarise the key points about chromosomes. So here they are. Okay guys, first of all, chromosomes are long threads of DNA and in some instances, like in eukaryotic cells, protein as well. More on that later. Chromosomes carry genetic information of a cell. And that's what you might be thinking, of course, because they're made of DNA and DNA carries genetic information. Well, then obviously, if chromosomes are made of DNA, then they too carry genetic information. Oops, carry genetic information of a cell. The information determines what proteins are made. So that is what the information is for. It determines what proteins are made. And... They're made up of many genes. Something else that we're going to talk about, genes, coming up soon. So they're the main points about chromosomes. So let's have a look at an overall picture of what we're talking and what we're dealing with here. All right, here we've got a cell. We're well familiar with cells. Now you'll be recognising this is a eukaryotic cell and that's because it has a nucleus. Now within the nucleus, we find chromosomes. However, you might be wondering why is this chromosome in an X shape where the ones that I brought in before, these ones here, these weren't in X shapes, these were just one linear component. The reason for that is because this is an example of a chromosome where the DNA has already undergone replication and the cell is about to divide. So that's a key difference and there'll be more on that at another time. So here we have the chromosome, and then if we break the chromosome down and look into and zoom in a bit further, we can see 
that the chromosome is actually made of wound up molecules of DNA. So here we have it here, the, the molecule we've learnt about, made of a double helix of nucleotides, all bound together, sugar phosphate backbone, and all of our A's, T's, C's, and G's. In a eukaryotic cell, that DNA gets wound up and wrapped around these proteins, they're called histones, wrapped around these proteins and packaged up into a big condensed chromosome. So that's where DNA fits into this conversation. Okay, cool. So what are genes? Right, that's the final piece of this puzzle. Where does this idea fit? Again, I'm sure it's something that you've heard of before. Genes. We know when we have attributes and characteristics that we've got from our parents, it's got something to do with genes. What are they? Where do they fit in this conversation? Well, here's your definition. Genes are segments of chromosomes that contain the code required to direct the manufacture of a polypeptide or an RNA molecule. Let's just take a deep breath because that is a big statement. Right, let's just go over it again. Genes are segments of chromosomes that contain the code required to direct the manufacture of a polypeptide or RNA molecule. So they've got the code that cells need in order to tell them how to make polypeptides or RNA molecules. I'm gonna go into this process of how polypeptides and RNA molecules are made from genes in videos on transcription and translation. They are part of what we call protein synthesis and there's lots of information to go through there and we can learn more about that in those videos. Okay, back to our overall diagram here where we have our cell eukaryotic because it's got a nucleus, it's got the chromosomes. Ah, another point I didn't make before. Because this is eukaryotic, the chromosomes are in fact linear. In a prokaryotic cell, not only would we not have a nucleus, but we also would not have linear chromosomes. We would have in fact circular chromosomes. And we wouldn't be using proteins to make those chromosomes. The chromosomes in prokaryotic cells only consist of DNA. So in our general diagram, we worked out that the chromosomes are in the nucleus, the chromosomes are made of this coiled up and condensed DNA, but if we look down at our DNA here, DNA and sections of the DNA are genes. And here we have an example of a gene. Really though, we gotta be careful, this is just a small section of a gene because this is only about six or seven base pairs long. In reality, guys, genes are hundreds of base pairs long. So not very realistic here, but that's just showing you a section of a gene, and it should help you to see where genes fit into DNA and chromosomes. Another way that we can look at it is using this diagram. Okay, in this diagram we have our chromosome. Again, this is a chromosome where the DNA has already replicated. It's ready for cell division. It's joined two sister chromatids which are identical versions of the same chromosome and they're joined at a centromere to make a single chromosome that's going to go through cell division. Don't freak out, there will be more on that in another video. So here, DNA is making up this chromosome. And sections of that DNA are called genes. And the genes are made up of these base pair repeats, and those base repeats are the code that are going to direct the manufacture of polypeptides or RNA molecules. Again, this here is only a short section of a gene because in reality, genes are hundreds of base pairs long. But this is just a good way of showing you where a gene fits into this DNA molecule and where this DNA molecule fits into this chromosome. So let's bring back our human carrier type. 23 
pairs of chromosomes to make 46 chromosomes in a human cell. Just a side note, if you look down here, you can tell the gender of this human. This is a male, because these are the sex chromosomes, and males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Notice they're the only two that don't look identical to each other, like all of the rest. All of the rest are identical pairs. In males, in the sex chromosomes, they have one X and one Y. In females, they have two X chromosomes. So, 23 pairs of chromosomes make up our human carrier type. Now, I need to tell you about the Human Genome Project. It's a fantastic initiative that has helped us to learn so much information about human DNA. And what we know currently, our best research at the moment, tells us that there are approximately 20,000 human genes. Now, if we think about it, they're spread across 23 pairs of chromosomes. 20,000 genes, 23 pairs of chromosomes, we've come to the conclusion that there are lots and lots of genes on a chromosome. So we know there are many genes per chromosome. And the other thing that we've learned is that chromosomes can be identified based on the genes that they contain. If I show you what I mean there, I can do that by bringing in two of our chromosomes. These is, this is human chromosome seven, and this is human chromosome four. It's easiest to locate genes when something goes wrong with them. So some of the easiest genes to locate were genes like the cystic fibrosis gene that's located here on chromosome seven. And the Huntington's disease gene is located here on chromosome four. So we can identify a chromosome based on finding those genes and their locations. So I was talking about the Human Genome Project before. The Human Genome Project has been responsible for finding the base sequence of all 23 human chromosomes, which means we know the base sequence of all of these things here. Now the challenge at hand is to work out what all of this information means and where each gene is located. Because an interesting fact is that most of a chromosome is actually made up of non-coding regions of DNA. And the actual genes only account for a small portion of chromosomes. So another challenge is working out, well, what is this non-coding DNA for? And that's where we're at in, in biological discovery. It's exciting times. Hopefully it might inspire you to f do some further study into biology. That's it for this video. We've looked at the relationship between DNA, chromosomes and genes. I really hope it helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.